These are creepy side. TikToks right. that will make you rethink. This picture your contains whole Reddit posts reality. from the least disturbing to the most, and we're starting with tier six. Today I f***ed up by admitting to my girlfriend that I pretend she is a giant cockroach when we have sex. Ever since I was a teenager, I've had very intense fantasies about having sex with a giant roach. This is what was recorded during an exorcism. This man made his victims into burgers. In 1994, Joe Metheny was living in South Baltimore with his girlfriend and their six-year-old son. I'm back, it's your boy F-I-T-T-I -T -T -I to the E. And today, we're looking at this complex together, so make sure to grab your water, your popcorn, whatever you want. Just remember to subscribe and like the video so it gets pushed to way more people and we can get the family rolling, if you know what I'm saying. Your boy's been thinking about making a clothing ring, but right now I just have my chain brand. So if you guys like what I'm wearing, check my link down in the description. So are we not gonna talk about the devil looking shadow creature across the street? Wait for the explanation. All right, you have a good eye. Look at the person across the street. Like I said in my last video, the Serbian dancing lady is an unnamed woman who dances on the street at night. She will then attack anyone who she hears or sees. It's believed that she is being controlled by a demon, who you can see literally right there. It's believed that she's just an innocent lady that's being controlled by a demon or the devil. So she is currently working as the devil's vessel to commit these crimes. It's pretty scary, not gonna lie. The Serbian dancing lady, I've been hearing a lot about that in my past videos. What do you guys think about the Serbian dancing lady? Do you think it's real or do you just think it's someone just dancing in the middle of the road? Put that down in the comments. <laughs> Me personally, that dude's getting some hands, bro. I'm being honest. I'm just being honest. With me, I would have to put hands on him. Cause like, who are you trying to scare, bro? Do not watch this video if you are easily disturbed. This is the sickening, very recent case of Lily Peters. On the 24th of April, 2022, 10-year-old Lily Peters was making her way home from her auntie's house in Wisconsin. Okay. She was biking and she was familiar with this <clears throat> route because she'd done it many times before. When she didn't return home that night, her dad reported her missing to police. What transpired was her parents' worst nightmare. Her body was discovered the following day at around 9 a.m. Officers located a bike that ended up being Lily's in the woods near a walking trail at the end of her aunt's street, and her body was discovered shortly after. Mm. Disturbing details emerged about Lily's death. She'd suffered blunt force trauma and had been strangled. Damn. Her body had then been SA'd. But who on earth would do such a thing to such an innocent little girl? Two days after she disappeared, police charged Lily's 14-year-old cousin, Carson Peters. He'd allegedly been riding home with Lily when the horrific incident occurred. It's alleged that he punched her in the stomach and attacked her. Now, the case is still ongoing, but he has admitted to the attack. Interestingly, his father is Adam Berger, who is pictured here. He spent three years in prison for being a convicted P-file. Now, Carson's bail is set to $1 million, and if convicted, he could spend life in prison. Yo, that's crazy. This is like the first time I've actually ever heard of a child getting a $1 million sentence and possibly life in prison. I don't know if you guys know, but in the United States, if you're 14 years old, you just get put into juvie, which is the juvenile detention center. So when you're younger than 18, you basically kind of get a free pass on what you do. So it's kind of weird for me hearing a 14 year old getting a $1 million bond and life in prison possibly. This is what was recorded during an exorcism. <laughs> Annalise Michelle was born in 1952 in West Germany. Her parents were very religious and went to mass twice a week. When Annalise was just 16, she started to experience severe convulsions and was diagnosed with epilepsy. Annalise grows up and goes to college. Her classmates describe her as withdrawn and very religious. 
As time went on, her symptoms only got worse as she suffered more seizures, which eventually landed her in a psychiatric mm. hospital. She was prescribed medication for convulsions, which didn't help. She then described seeing the devil's face randomly through the day. As the doctors changed her medication, her delusions only got more intense. She began hallucinating while praying, claiming she was hearing demonic voices that she was damned and would rot in hell. Her stay at the psychiatric hospital was not helping her mental health at all. And sadly, this was the case for many of those who were treated in these institutions. Eventually, Annalise became intolerant of Christian places and objects such as the crucifix. Doctors changed her medication again and her symptoms continued to get worse. Sadly, Annalise died in 1976 of malnutrition. She's only 23 years old. Damn, that's crazy. Imagine being possessed by a demon. I really wonder if you get possessed by a demon, like what really happens inside you? Like, do you feel different? Do you know you're being possessed? Are you like unconscious? What do you guys think? Leave it down in the comments. Jin pretending to be a human, <laughs> warning disturbing content viewer description is advised. Oh. Yo, what's good with bro? If I'm be honest, I think bro might just be off of something because the way how his eyes look, either one, he's possessed, he's a zombie, or he's off of that. Creepy facts you didn't know about. If you felt that you have been in that place before but never been, it is because you have been there in your past life. Don't sing at 3 a.m. Someone with a deep voice will join you. If you're getting married in your dreams, wake up. You're getting married to a demon. How do you get married to a demon though? Like, so you tell me like I'm dreaming, I get married in my dream to like a bad baddie, right? I'm getting married to this baddie. I wake up and turns out I signed my life over to a demon. Real Disney ghost stories sent in by you guys, part one. These Disneyland cast members wish to remain anonymous, but here are some stories about the little girl who haunts California Adventure. When I worked in Disney California Adventure, we would sometimes see a little girl and she would show up in the bakery tour alone. And usually by the time we figured out she was alone, she's gone. We asked another cast in the bakery and they said she comes by every now and then and wanders all the way to Little Mermaid. Before Disney California Adventure was built, it was a parking lot and she was hit by a tram. And since then, her ghost has haunted the area. It's funny because there's a pattern here. Another cast member wrote to me about this little girl as well in Disney California Adventure. First of all, he says that every land has some sort of ghost. Like every little land in Disneyland has something that haunts it, which is crazy. The ghost I experienced the most and will stay with me is the little girl in the Little Mermaid building. She also likes to walk around on the Grizzly Peak side. She even pulled my keys out of my pocket because I wouldn't respond to her while I was cleaning a restroom mm. and she was pounding a stall door. What? That is so scary. Here's another ghost story about the same girl. Apparently her name is Jennifer. I work at the restaurant on Buena Vista Street in California Adventure. Jennifer is very well known by cast members. She likes to lock the women's restroom doors. She turns candlesticks on, on the walls upstairs. I've heard a faint scream in the hallway on the second floor. She's pulled my hair a couple times and she has shown herself to our custodial at 3 a.m. Have you ever had an encounter with this little girl spirit at Disney California Adventure? Let me know in the comments and keep sending me more Disney ghost stories. Yeah, I actually never went to Disney California like ever. But if you've been there and you've encountered this little girl, let me know your story down in the comments. I don't personally have any stories with her. You have to be careful picking up stuff off the ground. So in the early 1960s, a family of four moved into a house in Mexico City. And one day the 10 year old son is playing out in the yard when he sees something small and shiny on the ground. He doesn't really think anything of it. He just picks it up and puts it in his left pant pocket. But then over the next couple days, the Radiation. boy starts getting sicker and sicker and the skin on his left side near his pocket is starting to burn. His mom finds a capsule on him and ends up putting it in a kitchen cabinet with a bunch of other glasses. But over time, the glasses start all turning black. Not only that, but the fingernails of everyone in the family also start turning black. The boy and his family start getting sicker and sicker until one by one, most of the family dies. And this all started happening when the capsule came into the house. So what was the thing the boy found on the ground? 
It was a stray capsule of cobalt-60, which is incredibly radioactive. I knew it! Similar to what fell off a truck in Australia in January. So for those who didn't know, before I started doing this reaction series, I actually did a, another series on radiation and atomic bombs. It's probably gonna pop up right here if you're on a laptop. If you're on the TV, my bad, you're not gonna see it. And trust me, bro, I feel bad for that kid's family because just because he picked up that one radioactive compound, it just ruined their whole family. And he didn't even know it either. So my prayers and thoughts go out to that family. Let's talk about what are the most haunted dolls in North America. Before I display him, I highly suggest you comment that you claim no negative energy in this video. No now, before energy. I start, Robert, I respect you, and all I am doing is telling your story. In the late 1800s, Thomas Otto and his family moved into a mansion in Key West, Florida. The Ottos were known to be stern with their servants, sometimes even mistreating them. There was a woman who was hired to take care of their son, Robert, and one day Mrs. Otto supposedly witnessed her practicing black magic in mm. their backyard and fired her. Before she left, the woman gave Robert a lifelike doll which stood three feet tall, had buttons for eyes, and human hair believed to be Robert's. Soon after, Robert chose to be referred by his middle name, Jean, after being scolded by his mother. He told her that Robert was the doll's name, not his. Jean was often heard in his toy room having conversations with Robert. Household objects would be found thrown across the room. Jean's toys turned up mutilated and giggling could be heard. Robert supposedly attacked people, sometimes locking them in the attic. One certain night, Robert was found at the foot of the owner's bed, giggling with a kitchen knife in hand. Robert was later moved to the East Martello Museum in Key West, where he sits perched in a glass box to this day. One employee cleaned Robert, turned off all the lights, and left for the night. The next day, he returned to find lights turned on and Robert sitting in a different position than the night before, and a fresh layer of dust on his shoes. Some say he'll even curse you. If you want to take a picture of him, you may ask politely. He'll tilt his head in permission. Now I just want to say again, Robert, I respect you and I am just trying to tell more people about your story. Have you seen Robert in person? Have you ever had any experiences with him? Let me know in the comments. That man, Robert, scaring me. I claim, I don't claim you, Robert. I claim no negative energy. Please don't hurt me. What is some of the crazy stuff people have confessed to you as they're dying? Well, in this series, I'm going to read to you some of the craziest ones I could find. This story comes from a hospice nurse that was dealing with a patient who had fought in the Vietnam War. Early on in his treatment, she actually asked him if he had any siblings, and he mentioned that he did have a brother, but he passed away in Vietnam. He also had a wife who had previously passed away, and because of this, he didn't have a lot of people that would come visit him. The man had dementia, and the nurse said that at times, it felt like he was digging deep into his brain to find moments from his life that he could describe to the nurse in vivid detail. So one night the nurse comes in, and the man is in really rough shape, like it looks like he's not gonna make it through the night. And when she walks in, he starts beckoning her over, like, come here, come here, come here. So the nurse comes over, and the man begins to tell her that his brother wasn't killed by an enemy soldier in Vietnam. He had actually killed his brother. And not only that, but these men were twins. So when the brother died, the other one fully assumed his identity when he came back to the States. Meaning that when he came back from the war, he took his brother's entire life, including his wife. The man ended up passing away that night, and later on the nurse told his daughter what she had heard. And the daughter did not believe her at all, but then years later, she finds a handwritten confession from her father stuffed in a Bible. Bro, that story honestly is kind of life-changing. Imagine you have a father, and he has a twin brother, twin brother. And then next thing you know, your father comes back from the war, but it's actually not your father. It's your father's twin brother, but you don't know because they're identical twins. This whole time you're thinking it's your dad, whole time it's his brother. And the brother kill. That was a crazy story, man. That's tragic. What would you do? Leave it down in the comments. Did this man get stuck in the past? Mike Markham set out to create a time machine. His idea was to use compact lasers to reduce the air pressure going in either pole direction. Mike was a recluse and worked tirelessly on his invention. On one occasion, he even caused a citywide blackout. However, it might have benefited him as he garnered some attention and received anonymous donations. When asked about what he would bring if he could time travel, he simply replied, my cell phone, however. In 1997, Mike and his work mysteriously disappeared without a trace. Soon afterwards, a news story was uncovered from the 1930s claiming that an unrecognizable man was found crushed in a metal tube on a California beach, and the only thing found with the body was a cell phone from the 1990s. 
What do you think about this? Please comment below. I mean, if I could time travel, honestly, I'd bring my cell phone too. Like, it'd be kind of cool. Just be like, yeah, bro, look at me. I'm back in the 1950s right now. Look, it's JFK, bro. Dressed up in like this, my bling. They'd be like, yo, what the? You'd probably see me in one of those series like Time Travelers from back in the 90s. Hmm, what would you do if you could time travel? Scariest videos on the internet? Part three. Once you see it, you'll never be the same. Did you see it? Play the video again and pay attention to the top right corner. Oh, that's so weird, bro. Imagine you're just walking out of a room and you see that. In my opinion, it might be fake, though, because she would look a little bit too calm. But that's kind of weird, bro. McDonald's ghost stories. I was working a late shift cleaning up the restrooms after a busy Friday night. While I was wiping the baby changing area, I heard a strange moan come from one of the stalls. I was the only person in the restroom. I checked the stall to see if it was an animal or something, but nothing was in there. I turned around and in the mirror I saw the reflection of a woman, just her head and torso floating. She was trying to talk to me, but it sounded all garbled and I couldn't hear what she was saying. I ran out of that bathroom so fast. <laughs> what? Why is this lady hanging out in the bathroom of a McDonald's? Here's another one. I was a maintenance worker at McDonald's. One of my tasks was cleaning and repairing the Playland area. One night I was climbing through the slides and the tunnels and heard a child's laughter echo through the crawl space. It was weird because the restaurant was closed and I was there alone, but I thought it was maybe coming from outside. I turned the corner and saw a little girl in a pink sweater go down the slide by herself. I checked the bottom of the slide to see if she came out of it, but there was no one there. There was a tragic accident a few years back on the road next to our building that involved a family. I always wondered if she was involved in that. I have never seen her since then, but I always feel a presence watching over me. That's really sad. Okay, last one. There is a ghost of a former customer who haunts our location. What? She was an older lady who would come here all the time. All of our employees see her when the restaurant is empty, usually in the early mornings. Her figure sits in one of the booths. She doesn't say anything and only stays a few seconds before her figure vanishes. I still don't know to this day why she chose to haunt this place. Maybe she just loved the food that much. I mean, same. She's not evil though. It's just a little startling sometimes. Do you have a ghost story at a McDonald's or any fast food establishment? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Why McDonald's though? Out of all the places you could haunt all the people, out of everything you could do in the afterlife, why chilling at McDonald's for minutes? Like, I'm just thinking about it from my POV. If I'm a ghost, bro, I'm not gonna be just chilling in a McDonald's. For what? I, mean, I can't eat food. What's the point? This man made his victims into burgers. In 1994, Joe Metheny was living in South Baltimore with his girlfriend and their six-year-old son. He returned home one day from work to find his girlfriend and their child had vanished. She, like Metheny, was addicted to drugs and Joe imagined. She fled with another man and began living on the streets with him. He flew in a rage. He looked for them for days. Under his search, he ended up attacking three victims. He threw them into the river to hide the evidence. Later on, police arrested Metheny for the murders, and he spent a year and a half in jail. Without physical evidence tying him to the crimes, Metheny went free. Shortly after being released, Metheny attacked two persons who he believed had information on his missing girlfriend. However, this time he would turn his victims into burgers. He would then sell the burgers. Damn, that's scary. That's why you gotta be careful who you eat from, bro. This man really obliterated people because his girl left him. I'm, I understand the pain in that, but you can't just go around looking for people. You gotta move on and just do better. Turning your victims into burgers and then feeding them to people, that's gotta be one of the most inhumane and sinister things you could do as a person. And in reality, if I ever saw you, I would literally have to backhand you. Not even fully slap you like a G. I would have to backhand you like a hoe. I feel like kids can see ghosts that we can't see. This story is about an imaginary friend that was probably something way worse. And if you like spooky stuff, definitely check out my podcast.
A woman in Virginia claimed that when her daughter was little, she used to have an imaginary friend that she called Little Michael. And at first it was all the normal imaginary friend stuff that kids do. She mm. would ask if Little Michael could eat dinner with them. She would ask if Little Michael could tuck her in at night. But she also said that if Little Michael didn't do those things, that he would get mad, which the mom thought was kind of weird. But then one day the daughter is drawing, so the mom comes over to like see what the daughter's working on. And she had drawn a stick figure of herself holding hands with a ghostly child figure that was in like tattered clothes. This isn't the exact photo, but the child apparently had these like deep, large black eyes and was holding wilting flowers in the other hand. So the mom's a little worried and she's like, hey, what are you drawing? And the daughter's like, oh, it's little Michael. The mom said the daughter demanded that that photo be put on the fridge. And after the drawing was placed on the fridge, little Michael just kind of stopped showing up as much. The mom talks it up to a little kid's imagination, but also says that anytime there's any sound in the house, that's all she can think of. Little Michael did not look friendly. And honestly, if I'm being honest, I, when I was a kid, like I have some very good memories from when I was a child. I don't remember ever having like an imaginary friend or seeing any sort of ghosts. So it kind of makes me think like, are these kids just tripping? Their imaginations are just really active? Or was I just like normal or something? Or maybe I wasn't normal for not seeing ghosts because I don't remember seeing any sort of entity or anything unusual when I was a kid. Bro, this guy's been battling a werewolf ever since episode one, bro. Bro, ever since like episode one all the way till now, this dude has been fighting a werewolf. <laughs> I swear to God, it's a werewolf. I don't know what else it could be, but he's just been fighting this werewolf. Scary facts that will, will blow, blow your, your mind. mind. One, the middle of nowhere is an actual place within New Mexico. The legend goes that an elderly couple lived out there with their dog and witnessed many strange and bizarre things. One night, they reported seeing a strange creature that they identified as a skinwalker. skinwalker. After reporting this to the police, the family had vanished under strange circumstances. Their dog, however, was left behind this is the story that courage the cowardly dog was based off Love of it. like and follow for more i don't know about you guys but courage the cowardly dog used to be one of my favorite cartoons as a kid i don't know what it was maybe it's like the creepy aspect of it but it was such an amazing cartoon if you also watched it when you were a kid put it down in the comments disturbing moments caught on live tv in this 2013 live footage a news reporter is getting ready to go live when an elderly local man wanders into the frame the two exchange polite greetings when suddenly, the reporter can be seen thoughtful and starts to insistently look over the old man, as if he recognizes him from somewhere. As it turned out, the old man who had just passed them by was the same person on whom they were about to file a missing person live report. Been looking for you for a while. You heard or anything? He had a memory problem and had wandered away in the wilderness overnight, fortunately finding somehow his way back. Yo, that's actually insane the irony the coincidence the sa bro that is insane imagine doing a missing report person like yeah hey guys this guy's missing uh if you've seen him and then the missing guy that you're about to do this report on just walks by you like hey how you doing uh, 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 uh. that's crazy bro the dark side of reddit this picture contains reddit posts from the least disturbing to the most and we're starting with tier six today i up by admitting to my girlfriend that I pretend she is a giant cockroach when we have sex. Ever since I was a teenager, I've had very intense fantasies about having sex with a giant roach. Really gives a whole new meaning to the word cockroach. OP his balls to prove a point. Four years ago, a guy from Croatia posted this image claiming he had found a homemade electric chair. Now people in the comments didn't exactly believe him, so he did the only logical thing. Man used the chair to electrocute his balls and proceeded to upload a picture of them. I came home to find this in my driveway. And while people in the comments were concerned, they all agreed, open that shit. Well, he did, and inside was a key along with coordinates to a cemetery in Germany. If you want to go down this iceberg yourself, click the link in my bio and you can explore. I'm not going to lie, for you to imagine an intimate moment with your girlfriend and imagine her to be a cockroach, you got to be one sick MF to do that. One sick ah, motherfucker to do it. Like, why would you, why would you, cockroach, uh, a cockroach, then, then this man electrocuted his butt, what? These are facts that'll make your skin crawl, part two. Up first, since 2017 alone, over 2 million people in the United States have gone missing. This is absolutely crazy, and I can't believe that this stuff is happening right now. You could literally be enjoying your favorite show right now, and somebody else could be getting kidnapped and never seen again. Next up, medical mistakes kill over 250,000 Americans every year, and if they were a disease, 
they would be the third leading cause of death in the United States. This is completely sad, and I wonder why this happens so often. Finally, your mind can actually sense somebody staring at you even while you're asleep, which explains why you randomly wake up during the middle of the night. I mean, if you ask me, it's pretty obvious that as human beings, we all make mistakes. Even if you're a professional in what you do, even if you're an athlete, even doctors, that's most likely why there's 250,000 medical mistakes that led to deaths. But that's understandable. Although as a professional doctor, you should definitely ice up more. You should definitely, you know, come in clutch. You're not supposed to be messing up like that. But it's understandable because, you know, we're all humans at the end of the day. Disturbing things caught on camera. Jen Berari and her family lived peacefully in an isolated barn house until they started noticing strange things. One night, Jen claims that she saw a white figure coming out of the pond. The next morning she heard an unusual banging coming from her living room. To add to that, she saw a mysterious dark figure reflecting on her TV, but what happened after that will creep you out. Take a look. Guys, I wanted to show you the fucking pond, but please tell me you see that. There's something. It looks like the old man I was coming mm. out. I see. Follow if you saw it. If I saw that one, I would probably go up and press him like, yo, what, what are you doing on our property, bro? Or I would be like, uh, you know, we're, we're just going to leave. We're just going to leave. You know, he can just have the house. Just just take the house, take the kids, take the dog, take everything. Honestly, this is your house now. You know what? Take the keys to my car. Honestly, bro, you can just have it all. Disturbing facts you didn't want to hear. Part two. Many doctors say that the most common last words they hear are, I don't feel so good. Most laugh tracks you hear in TV shows were recorded in my the 1950s, people. meaning that the people you hear laughing are probably dead. During the French Revolution, it was said that the guillotine had to be used multiple times to get the job done. Mm -hmm. The reason that planes shut off their lights right before they land is so that passengers' eyes can adjust to the dark just in case there's a crash. This is so if the power goes out during the crash landing, they can better find an escape route. The guillotine one is actually kind of crazy. I've heard about that multiple times, but bro, imagine. Imagine you did something bad back in the day, bro. They're like, you know what? We're gonna cut your head off. And then they have to do that three, four, five different This is the terrifying story about an occurrence that happened in a place called Stagtown. Stagtown had always been your ordinary small town where nothing ever really changed. That is, until something very strange started happening there. A girl named Frankie returned to Stagtown, where she started to notice cameras in odd places around the town. It seemed that every day, more and more cameras would show up. Soon enough, they even started appearing inside people's private homes as well, including inside Frankie's apartment, almost as if they would crawl in. Mm. To make matters even weirder, each camera had long wires attached to it, which snaked down into the ground, making them nearly untraceable. Until one day, Frankie decided to find the source of these cameras and was able to follow one wire. What she found was absolutely terrifying. Who do you think is behind all those cameras? You know, that's what's really weird about today's society is there can be cameras everywhere and some cameras you don't even know they're actually cameras. That's what makes it really messed up. And I've heard about stories of people staying in hotels and motels, bathrooms, and then there's like cameras like in these really, really hidden places, whether it be like a tissue box or like the outlet plugs in the wall. It's like, bro, stuff that you think are normal could potentially have a lens in it and someone could be watching you. So just please be careful of where you go and what you do when you get to that place. Disturbing facts that may ruin your day. You are the oldest that you have ever been and, and the, the youngest, youngest that you will, will ever be. be. Your bed absorbs 26 gallons of your sweat every year. There are 15 dead people for every one person alive. Science can't measure exactly how strong a gorilla is, so there's no sure way on how to contain them. The gorilla enclosures at zoos are just based on trust. Every 18 minutes, someone in the United States has a brain aneurysm that ruptures. Vampire moths are real and can feed on the blood of humans. A jar of peanut butter contains 10 or more rodent hairs and can contain up to hundreds of insect fragments. Big Bird almost joined NASA's Challenger mission to help kids become more interested in space. Millions of kids would have watched Big Bird and the Challenger space shuttle explode on live television. But yeah, if you guys actually didn't know, a lot of insect follicles are found inside peanut butter, which is very, very weird. So next time you're eating something soft and you feel something crunchy, 
just just remember. Jonathan O'Brien took this picture of a UFO in Yosemite National Park back in 1992 when taking the Yosemite Falls trailhead. Others around him also saw this strange glowing object in the sky and pointed and gasped. This was in plain daylight. However, park personnel had harassed some of these witnesses who publicly shared that they had taken pictures of this phenomenon at the time, even going as far as confiscating their cameras. What do you think? Like and follow for more. Well, if you're confiscating cameras, there's obviously something there that you just don't want the public to see. I'm sorry, like it's obvious. I feel like there's an obvious way to do things and then there's like a low key way of doing things and just taking people's camera, telling them no, don't post whatever. That's the obvious way for saying, yeah, we know there's things here that we just don't want you to share to the public. Disturbing facts you wish, wish you, you didn't, didn't know. Part seven. If you can remember your dream, when you wake up, it wasn't a dream. It was a message. That's a good one. That's a good one. Kangaroos are dangerous. And if somehow you mess with one of them, it would likely lurk you into the water and try to drown you. In the movie Wizard Us, the lion's outfit was actually made out of real lion skin. You may be living in the last year of your life without knowing it. That's very true. You have probably walked past a missing person in your life. Alabama has at least 20,000 homicide cases. After this video, someone is probably taking their last breath. That's a fact. Alaska is the most dangerous state in the USA. The dream one is very true. There's multiple times in my life where like, I've remembered dreams about specific situations and whatever the dream was, it had a deeper meaning. I didn't really look too much into it. And then that situation played out in my life. And I was like, damn, I literally got told this like a couple months ago. I'm still trying to figure out how Alaska is the most dangerous state. There's like no one there. Or maybe I'm tripping. Maybe there's people in Alaska. If you're in Alaska right now, put that down in the comments. Man murders mother to get interviews to news. Later, the same day as the interview, investigators identified the woman found in the creek as 60-year-old Patricia Haverly. Her son didn't even hint toward knowing it was her. It's sad to say that that's someone's either daughter, mother, whatever, both, child. So when Haverly mentioned it could be someone's mother, it turned out it was his own mother. But during his interview hell? with Newswatch 16, he said he thought it was someone from out of town. I think it was kind of a hit and something happened. Something went bad and this is like a rural area. So they just wanted to plant the body somewhere else besides wherever the hell they were from. Haverly lives across the street from where the body was found. When Newswatch 16 asked him again what he thought, Haverly continued to talk about mob or gang-related killings. It would be like a place where people from the city would want to put a body because most, most likely they wouldn't be found. Haverly also spoke about his mother's possible reaction to troopers finding a body near their home. I'm guessing like my mother, she would be concerned um, and probably a lot of the other neighbors would be concerned. Haverly was right about his neighbors being concerned, especially when police identified the woman as his own mother and arrested Haverly later in the day for her death. You know, I personally don't really judge people and I don't really know what people go through on a daily basis, but how much hatred do you have to have in your heart to eliminate your own mother, the person that literally brought you into this world, you're gonna eliminate them? That's crazy. I want—I really, really, really wanna know his reasoning behind that. This is a true horrifying story, part 25. Warning, this is not a joke. The information that's going to be shared is dangerous and life-threatening. Do not, under any circumstance, commit the actions that will be narrated. This is the world's most dangerous book ever. Shams al Ma'arif. This book was written by Ahmed al-Buni in the 17th century. But technically, the author of this book is not a human being. I never did and will never read this book. And this is your second warning. Do not read this book. I won't, Ahmed al-Buni practiced black magic. And he was in contact with the most powerful jinns and demons before he passed away. The jinns were the authors of this book. The elder generations, like our moms and dads, have heard about this book and they were warned by it. There are thousands of horrifying stories of people who read this book. Shams al Ma'arif explains everything about black magic. How to get in touch with the world of jinns, 
how to marry a jinn, and the sacrifices you have to do for the devil, and much more. Unfortunately, this book can be easily found online. One day, a Saudi Arabian man that read hundreds of books for a living, decided to read this book specifically out of interest and love for all books, without fearing the consequences behind it. He reached the chapter that teaches readers how to get married to a female jinn. He laughed about it. He tried the ritual to experiment it. The first night after finishing the whole book and completing the marriage ritual, he felt someone breathing next to his face. And on the second night, he felt a hand touching his feet. And on the third night, he heard her voice. The man was officially locked in a marriage with a demon. Five years go by. He met a normal, beautiful woman that he fell in love with, and they both decided to get married a week before the wedding day. The bride, the bride's parents, and the groom's parents all passed Damn. and died in three different car crashes. These are the consequences behind this book. And it's also known from many stories of people that have died from reading the first few pages. If you don't finish reading the book, you will get killed. All my stories, all of them, are true incidents that happened one time only. But this book is a product that is permanently available online. I beg you, do not go anywhere near Shams al Ma'arif. This video is to educate you on the dangers behind this book. Do not go anywhere close to the world of jinns. You don't gotta tell me twice, bro. I'm not doing that. Hell no. Would you read that book? Put it down in the comments. And if you would, you're a brave soul. I promise you, because I'm not reading that. But anyways, thank you for watching. This was a little bit of a longer video because I know you guys have been commenting on my two hour video that you like my longer videos. So if you like this video, please like the video so it gets pushed to more people. The more likes I get, the more my video reaches a wider audience and I can grow my platform. And before you know, we might even have 100,000 subscribers, boys. We're just pushing 100K views. That was amazing. I love you all for that. Like, thank you. I can't even express my gratitude for hitting 100K views. I've always wanted to do this YouTube thing. And now I'm actually kind of see it manifest into my reality. And it's actually like a kind of like a dream come true. So if you guys like this video, please, please, please actually like the video. I'll catch you in the next one. Make sure to check out my other videos. Peace. Love you all.